You is looking at our old friend, the Kingfish, as he's getting ready for another quiet evening at home with his wife, Sapphire, and her mama. Well, how do you do that? <laughs> That's his favorite smoking jacket he's putting on. And now he's lighting up his first cigar of the evening. There he goes, making the final preparation to make sure it'll definitely be a quiet evening. <laughs>
got something like the opera with the yelling and the screeching taken out of it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Kingfish, uh, I don't think this is for me, because I don't like no kind of dancing that ain't got a runway. Yeah, I've seen a picture of that ballet, and they had a dying swan in it. Oh, shooting stuff, huh? Oh, no, Andy. I tell you, it was a great deal. Now, the ballet started off with this swan ballet who went all over the sea. The ballet who went all around the place. And all at once, she gave a kick. <laughs> and that's to give the thing a bounce. And then while she's having a great time up there, all of a sudden, she doubles up. Uh, must have been a liver attack or something. And then while she's a grunting and a groaning and a hissing and a kicking, she falls down to the floor and conks out. Oh, Andy, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe I could take my gal Susie to this ballet and we could sop up some of this culture together while she's up in the balcony. Uh, how much you want for these tickets, Kingfish? Well, they're uh, $2.50 a piece, uh, $5. $5? Dollars. Holy smoke, I thought you wanted something like a quarter piece for them. No, no. <laughs> but Andy, say, why don't you give these two tickets to Sapphire and her mama? After all, they've been yelling about not going out. Let them go to the ballet. See, Andy, that's an idea. If they want to go out, here's the answer right here. And you know, a uh, thing like this will not only keep them out of the house, but it'll give my ears a rest for the evening. Hello, Sava? Well, look, honey, I got to thinking about what we were discussing last night, and I done something about it. The ballet? Why, Joyce, I can hardly believe my ears. I always wanted to see it. Uh, is it for tonight? Yeah, honey. And they're good seats, too. Uh, row 22 and seats 6 and 8. Fine seats. Yeah, honey, and I got another little surprise for you, too. Yeah, I done bought you a genuine pigskin wallet. You can carry it in your purse. <laughs> oh, joy. Don't you sound like a changed man? Yeah, and I know you and your mama are going to have the time of your life. All right, dear. Goodbye. This really gonna be something. Them two old hens watching a dying swan kick the bucket. <laughs> 30 second free train, Sergeant Downey speaking. Sergeant, my name is J.P. Thorndike. I was walking along 7th Avenue this morning when my pocket was picked. It was a pigskin wallet with $245 in it. Now, uh, have you any clues? Any description or anything like that? Well, the only thing that might help you, Sergeant, is it was a new wallet containing two tickets for the International Ballet for tonight. I even remember their position. It was row 22, seats 6 and 8. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll have a couple of our men at the ballet. And if those seats are occupied, we'll have the pickpocket in jail in no time at all. Come here. Okay. I 
I'm a detective. Now come on out of there, both of you. Detective? Are you coming out or do I have to come in there and get you? Listen, we ain't done nothing wrong and we ain't coming out of here. We came down here to see the ballet. Now, if you want to start something, come on. All right, lady. That's how it's got to be. Come on, Harry, let's get him. Will you tell those two women out there that I call this number six times tonight and nobody answers? There's nothing more I can do. Oh, Lauren Gingrich. Oh, good morning, Brother Andy. Hey, I just drop out of Mama like the ballet last night. Well, Andy, to tell you the truth, I don't know. There's something peculiar. It was very late when they got in last night, and I was asleep and didn't hear them. Then they must have got away early this morning before I woke up. Because they wasn't there then neither. Yeah, that is peculiar, all right. And I had to get my own breakfast this morning. And this is the first time since me and Sapphire have been married that she ain't sat across the table from me. It is, huh? And Andy, I made a discovery. It ain't them stale rolls that killing my appetite every morning. <laughs> reading the article here in the paper, and it seems like they had an awful lot of excitement at the place last night. What was it saying in the paper, Andy? Oh, there it is right in the headline. Near ride at ballet, pickpocket suspects jailed after terrific battle. Well, I hope that part of Mama was where they could see everything. You know, they like excitement. Yeah. <laughs> they say here the battle done commenced when they tried to remove the culprits from their seats in row 22. very calm 
about this. After all, there ain't no point in me getting all upset just because you're responsible for me and Mama being thrown to jail like a couple of criminals. But when I get out of here, I'm going to fix you so you'll never forget it. But, honey, I told you the whole thing wasn't my fault. I found a wallet in the street with a ticket in it. I didn't know who they belonged to, they wasn't no name or nothing. Now, I'm going to get the ticket and I'm going to show you who it was. Well, what's the matter with you? Well, I'm going to show you who it was. Well, what's the matter with you? Stop, uh, you know I can't get the thousand dollar bail. All I can do is go and see this man, Mr. Thorndike, but lost a wallet and tell him what happened, then maybe he'll drop the charges. Just get us out of here. I don't care how you do it. All right, honey. I'll do all I can. Now, don't worry about a thing. And goodbye, Mama dear. I'm glad to see you taking this as nice as you is. Come on, Andy. <laughs> Yes, sir. And be careful how you're stalling. 
From the record, this Thorndike is a pretty tough customer. Now, don't let him get away. Uh, yes, sir.
What did you say, Mama? You heard me, George Stevens. I want my $50 back. Everybody in the building heard you. What $50 is you talking about? That $50 you borrowed to have your appendix taken out. Oh, that. Well, why you want it back so quick? I only borrowed it eight or nine years ago. <laughs> I'm going to take my life savings and invest it in a business. Then I'm going to move out of here. You is? Yes. Yeah. Hooray! What's that? I, I thought I'd see the parade going by. You're going to see a lot of things going by if you don't get me that money, and quick. And I ain't going to move out of here till I get it. Huh. Hello, honey. Hello, George. Your mama tell me she's going to hit the road. Yes, and it's because of you that she's leaving. She thinks you don't want her living here with us. Oh, honey, what could ever give her an idea like that? Because of all the mean things you've done to her, like changing the lock on the front door, packing her suitcase, setting it in the hall, and yesterday, you hung this on her bed. Oh, your mama just too sensitive, that's all. <laughs> well, uh, honey, how much money does your dear sweet mama intend to put in this enterprise she's gonna buy? That's none of your business, George. Well, uh, if I knew what kind of business she want to go in, I might put her next to something. Oh, no, you don't. Mama and I are going out right now to check on the ads in the newspaper. Yes, huh? Let me look at this thing here. Mm-hmm. Beauty parlor for sale. Cheap. Now, beauty parlor, that might be all right. With her standing around in there, that might make the customer look pretty good. Joe. Mm, chinchilla raisin. Make big money in this profitable new business. Manhattan chinchilla breeder. Oh, yes, George, that's the latest thing. I've heard people are making fortunes. Hmm, they is, huh? Mm, mm. Come on, Sapphire, let's get going. All right, Mama. And remember, I want that $50, and I don't move out of here till I get it. Well, where is I going to get it? That's your worry. Just you get it. Come on, Sapphire. Fifty dollars. Uh, chinchilla raven. Mm. Well, hello there, friend. How do you do there? <laughs> what can I do for you, sir? Well, I just figured on uh, making some quick money with these chinches here. Well, there is a lot of money to be made from chinchillas. She is? Well, how much for these two here? Sixteen hundred dollars, son. Well, then... Sixteen hundred dollars? Why, them cost more than them uh, rabbit to make them anger store your sweaters out of. Oh, very true, but you see, these are rare animals. Now, they originally were imported from Peru, brought down from high in the Andes Mountains on the backs of llamas. Uh, never and mind all of that. Uh, now, uh, how do you make the big money with them? Well, you raise them for chinchilla coats. Now, a chinchilla coat is worth between twenty and thirty thousand dollars, sir. Mm-hmm. Now, them two ain't big enough to make no coat. But you, you don't understand. You see, you raise enough chinchillas from these two for a coat. Come right over here, and I'll show you a little more. Now, this breeding chart shows how the chinchillas increase through the multiplying action of the strain, developing into a forty thousand dollar coat. I thought you said a $30,000 coat. Well, you see, the market keeps going up all the time, sir. You do, huh? <laughs> Come here. Uh, you can wrap up these two. Uh-huh. All right. Now, tell me, will this be by cash or by check, sir? Well, I was thinking on taking them on consignment, and when I sell the coat, I'll pay you for the chinches. <laughs> I'm very sorry, sir. Our policy is cash. Well, that being the case, I'll have to get my quick money elsewhere. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. Ann. Oh, hi, Amos. What's the matter, Andy? You sick? Yeah, sick in the head. Oh, gal trouble. Yeah. Listen, Amos, how come every time I look down in the dump, you know this gal trouble? Because it always is. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, what you got yourself into this time, son? Engagement, elopement, breach of promise? It wasn't that, Amos. I done promised Cynthia May I got to give her a fur coat. 
How could you do a thing like that? Well, it was easy. I said, sent the mayor, you want a fur coat? And she said, yeah. And now I was stuck. And all I got is $50. Now look, Andy, you can't get any kind of a decent fur coat for $50. Well, why don't you go to her and tell her you just can't do it? No, I couldn't do that, Amos. She's a trusting kind of a gal. And besides, she's holding my watch as security. Oh, well, I'll see you later, Amos. Yeah, so long, Andy. I see your ad here on the phone book, uh, and I call in here about one of them easy loans. Uh, $50. Yeah, and I see here, uh, no collateral, no co-signer. Well, I ain't got none of that stuff, so I in good shape there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, credit rating. Well, let's forget the whole thing. <laughs> Hey, Kingfish. Don't bother me, Andy. I got a fiscal crisis cooking here. Yeah, well, I got me a problem, too, Kingfish. Andy, you wrestle with your problems, and I'll wrestle with mine. My gal, Cynthia May, is giving me a bad time. Golden Fleece Finance Company. Now, that sounds like an honest concern. I didn't promise Cynthia May a fur coat. And all I got is $50. <laughs> Cancel the call, Mr. Golden. I'm gonna get my fleece elsewhere. <laughs> Andy, I'm a thoughtless, selfish man. Here I am worrying about my puny trouble when you got a king-sized job there. Andy, tell me all about it, old pal. Well, I don't know how it gets into these things, Kingfish. Me and Santa Maria are sitting in the park smooching, and she says she's cold. And the next thing I know, I done promised her a fur coat. Ooh, I see. Yeah, and I've been all over town, and I can't find no place where I can get a decent fur coat for $50. I might as well kiss my smooching goodbye. $50, huh? <laughs> Andy, you are lucky you stopped in. I just going into business. You is? Yeah, Andy, has uh, you ever seen a chinch? A who? Uh, one of them little animals that they make their chinchilla coats out of. No, but I heard about them coats, and they cost a lot of money. Oh, yeah, 20 or $30,000. <laughs> wow. Andy, how would you like to uh, get one of them coats for your gal for the trifling sum of $50, including the exercise tax? How can I do it? Just leave the details and the money to me. Now, wait a minute, Kingfish. This sounds like some kind of scheme you got to get your hands on my $50. All right, Andy. If you don't want to keep your promise to your gal and get back to smooching on the regular basis, it's okay with me. Because I can sell the $30,000 chinchilla coat for $50 all day long. I'll see you later. Uh, uh, but wait a minute, Kingfish. Is you sure this is on the up and up? Andy, this is on the up, up and up. All right. Here's the money. Now, where's the coat? Well, Andy, you come back here in an hour, and I'll be all set up, and then I'll give it to you. <laughs> a chinchilla coat? Mm -hmm. Oh, Andy, you're a doll. Yeah, that's me, all right. But, Andy, they cost thousands of dollars. How could you ever do it? Oh, it wasn't nothing. You see, I got a friend in the fur business. <laughs> oh, Andy, I knew you'd keep your word. You is such a sweet, trusting girl, Santa May. But when am I going to get my coat? Oh, I suppose to pick it up in an hour. Uh, what time is it? According to your watch, it's 2.30. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Calhoun. Hi, Kingfish. Well, I uh, got them two rabbits you sent me after. They cost me a dollar and a quarter. Yeah, that's fine. I'll bring them right over here. Yeah. Yeah, I just put them in the cage here. Uh, Kingfish, hmm? how about my dollar and a quarter? Oh, I gonna pay you. Give me a little time. I got to get these rats in chillers ready here for Andy. These is rabbits. Calhoun, I know they're rabbits. You know they're rabbits. And the rabbits know they're rabbits. But does the pigeon? 
I mean, Andy knew their rabbits. King Pete, you is doing a mean, underhanded thing here to Andy, and you wants me, Al Gonquin, J. Calhoun, to help you. You is representing these as ranch and chillers. These common, ordinary, everyday garden variety rabbits that I just paid a dollar and a quarter for. Any man who will aid and abet it a Now, wait a minute, Calhoun. I'm going to give you five dollars for the rabbit. That's what I was saying. Any man that'll do a fine thing like this is a true lover of the chinches. All right, Calhoun. Here you five dollars. Now, let me miss you. See you, King Z. Well, where's my chinchilla coat, Kingfish? I'm right over here, Andy. Andy, that a $30,000 chinchilla coat if ever I see one. <laughs> Kingfish, what's the matter with you? There ain't nothing in there but two rabbits. I know you was gonna pull a fast one on me. Give me my 50 bucks. Uh, look, Andy, you got a uh, chinchilla coat there. You just ain't seen it yet. Well, all I see is I'll give you 50 bucks for a chinchilla coat. And here you is trying to pawn off two rabbits on me. This time you're going too far. Now look, Andy, now take the average idiot. He would look at them and say they were rabbits. But Andy, you ain't the average idiot. You're darn right, I am. Well, then, uh, you know that them is the long-eared, pink-eyed, practically never seen type of white or mine chinchilla. Yeah. <laughs> They sure look like rabbits to me. Well, Andy, I'm going to show you where you're wrong. We're going to put them to the acid test. Come here, son. Now, right here, we have the rare chinchilla feed. I take some of the rare chinchilla feed, and I walk back over here, and then I put the rare chinchilla feed into the rare chinchilla cave. <laughs> See that, Andy? Now, if them wasn't rare chinchillas, what would they be doing eating that rat chinchilla feed? Well, uh, Any other question? Where's my chinchilla coat? Andy, you don't seem to know what you got here. Well, I know what I ain't got, my 50 bucks. Now, hand it over. Andy, look at them furry little creatures. Now, you know that they come from the mountains of Peru? The high llamas, they were $1,600 a pair. But how come you want to sell them to me for 50 bucks? Now, Andy, I want you to keep this quiet. Now, the reason I can sell them to you so cheap is because I didn't have to pay that high import tax. You see, they come across the border with the wetbacks. Well, how can I make a coat out of them two? Well, Andy, now that's where the third multiple elocution comes in. Now, step over here to the chart, Andy, and I'll explain everything to you. Chinchilla relation. Now follow me closely. Now take these two chinches of yours. One is plus and one is minus. Now you see, that's the way us uh, big chinchilla breeders uh, can tell them apart. Yeah, but uh, which is the plus and which is the minus? Oh, we don't care nothing about that, Andy. That's only important to the chinchilla. Now follow me closely. Now it's a well established scientific fact that when the plus meet minus, that causes electric spark. Now, these chinches are sparking for you all the time. And before you know it, you got four more. Yeah. Now, the sparks is really commencing to fly. For well, right after that, you got eight more chinches. And from that eight, you get 16. And them 16 arcs over into 32. And there you got your chinchilla coat. Yeah, that's wide enough for a coat for sentiment. And Andy, all you got to do is give him a little feed, a little water, and you're going to raise it right there in your own room. And there you got the multiple uh, elocution working for you night and day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kingfish, that sounds good on paper, but how I know it's going to work for me? Well, now I'll tell you, Andy. Andy. Andy, congratulations, son. Of course. I had a third of multiple elocution. It working for you already. <laughs> yeah. Hello? Yes, George, my 
Mama got the $50. You should have seen her face. Well, I'm glad I was spared the pleasure. Uh, did she move yet? Mama's out now looking for a business to buy, George. She'll be moving as soon as she finds one. Well, tell her to get a move on. Now, I kept my part of the bargain. I paid her back her $50. Say, George, where did you get that money? Well, I did a little dabbling in the live stock market. <laughs> Kingfish, I want my $50 back. Uh, hold the phone. Uh, what's your trouble, Andy? My landlady says I can't keep no animals in my room. And I've been thinking. I give you $50 for a chinchilla coat. Now, I give you back the chinches, and you gives me the coat of the $50. Oh, uh, Andy, hold it a second. I'm right in the middle of a potent phone call here. All right. Hello, rat chinchilla breeder. <laughs> well, a funny thing just happened. A friend of mine just come in with a cage full of chinches that I'm going to buy back from him for $50. Oh, I know I'm crazy to sell them to you for $1,500. They're worth at least $2,000. But if it's a cash deal... Hang up, King Fisher. Hang up. Uh, Ratchet Chilla Dealer, I'll call you back later. Andy, how do you want your 50 cash or traveler's checks? Oh, no, you don't. What kind of a dummy you think I is? I heard what you said on that phone. Andy, I'm ashamed of you. You were eavesdropping. But I ain't selling these chinches back to you for no 50 bucks so you can sell them for 1500 But Andy, you said you couldn't keep them. Well, look. You tell me where this rad chinchilla breeder is, and I'll sell them to him for $1,500. i am sorry, Andy, but I can't betray a man's business confidence in me. <laughs> well, I ain't letting these go if it's worth that much. I think I'll go down to this chinchilla headquarters and ask the man if I can't raise them somewhere beside my room. Oh, no, Andy. You don't want to go to them chinchilla fellas. Why not? Well, Andy, you see these little fellas here is a one-man animal, and they detach to you. Yeah, well, I detached them, too. <laughs> yeah, you see, Andy? If you go down to that there chinchilla headquarters and they see you eyeing them other chinches, they're going to get jealous. And then they get nervous. And when they get nervous, Andy, why, the hair fall out. And if there's one worthless thing in this whole world, it's a bald-headed chinch. <laughs> Don't you worry, little chinches. I'm gonna take good care of you. Yeah, now that's it, Andy. I uh, just keep chummy with them and they keep working on your coat. Yeah, but uh, where are they gonna work on it at? Andy, I got an idea. Come with me. Wait a minute, where are we going? Andy, I'm gonna let you use the storeroom in the basement of the lodge hall for your chinchilla workshop. Go right on down and make yourself the home. Okay, King. <laughs> Well, Mama, they had a good old Sunday paper again. You know it come every Sunday. Uh, you read it last Sunday. If you're trying to let me know that another week has passed by, I'm fully aware of it. Hey, let me see here. I might be able to find you a business to buy here in the classified. Huh! Man, they go. Yeah, Andy, it looks like you got that coat built down from there to the shirt tail. Yeah, Kingfish, this is great. I think I'm going to tell all of my friends about the chinchilla business. Oh, no, Andy, don't do that. Why not? Well, Andy, if they find out, I mean, uh, if they start raising them too, uh, then they're going to gut the chinchilla market, and they're going to knock the bottom right out of it. But, Kingfish, what... Now, wait a minute, Andy. Take my word for it. If you tell them what you are doing, they're going to be one-cent sales on chinchilla coats. Kingfish, this is the nearest thing to perpetual commotion I ever did see. <laughs> Calhoun, as you seen, Andy? Yeah. Well, every time he go out, I get the shakes. I afraid he's gonna open his big mouth and start telling people about his chinchilla. And then they're gonna come down here and find out they rabbits. Calhoun, I got to find some way to keep Andy in. Oh, I'll talk to you later, rat chin chilla breeder. Andy, where you been? Uh, went out to get a cup of coffee. Uh, did you talk to anybody? Yeah, the man behind the counter at the beanery. What'd you say? Mm, give me a cup of coffee. You say anything else? Mm, yeah, 
What? With cream and sugar. Did you talk to anybody else? No. Andy, you got to stay with the chinches night and day. Listen, Kingfish, I ain't gonna stay down in that hole. And besides, I don't see why this has got to be such a big secret anyway. Andy, when you come in, I was talking to the rare chinchilla breeder on the phone, and he give me a hot tip. A hot tip? Andy, the chinchilla market is teetering, and I advise you to sell. Yeah, but what about Cynthia May's coat? Andy, if the market fall, them chinchilla coats ain't gonna be worth nothing. So take your profit and buy Cynthia May a good coat. Yeah, I guess you're right, because I don't want to give her no cheap coat. <laughs> but say, Kingfish, where will I sell the chinches? Oh, Andy, you can't sell the chinches until they've had uh, chlorophyll treatment. What's that? Well, the rare chinchilla breeders code say that no chinch can be sold until he's been chlorophyllated to remove the chinch odor from the chinch. And that's what you got to do. You mean I got to brush the teeth? Oh, no, Andy, I'll tell you how you do it. You put them out on the green grass, which is the pure, untoothpasted chlorophyll. Let them fill their little stomach, and then you can sell them like hot cakes. Yeah, but where is I going to find green grass? Central Park. And it is the gangs of it over there. Now, you take them over there and let them graze around a little. Kingfish, is you sure you ain't making all this stuff up? Andy, I got you into this, and I feel morally irresponsible for you. So that's the reason I want to see you get out of this thing with a pocket full of money. That's the reason I've given you the right dope. Okay, Kingfish, I'm gonna do it. Kingfish, do you mean to tell me that you has convinced Andy to let them rabbits run loose out there in Central Park? <laughs> Calhoun, look out there. There ain't no moon. <laughs> Can you imagine Andy trying to catch them rabbits out there in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> he ain't never gonna find them. Uh. <laughs> then he ain't never gonna know that they ain't genuine chinches. Uh. <laughs> 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 well, come on, King Fish. So long, Andy. I said, so long, Andy. Ah, uh, so long, Calhoun. So long, Andy. Andy. Kingfish, I want to talk to you. Now, wait a minute, Andy. It ain't my fault if you let them chinches get away from you. Look, Kingfish, I know it wasn't your fault. I did the whole thing myself. Andy, I'm glad you realized that. Because when you took them chinches out of here against my advice, I declared myself out of the whole deal. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Kingfish. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 150 bucks. Where'd you get it? Andy, where did you get it? Well, uh, on my way to the park, I met a party who wanted to go into the chinchilla business. And I sold the whole batch. <laughs> that was a good deal, Kingfish. Next time you get another, let me know. <laughs> uh, you still alive, Kingfish? Oh, Calhoun, that roll of money Andy had, he sold them things for $150. Did? And that money come at me so fast, I couldn't figure out a way to get my hands on it. Oh, Kingfish, go on. You about $150. Just console yourself that you was off the hook with Andy. Now, if your mother-in-law moves out, you'll be sitting on top of the world. Yeah! <laughs> oh, Sapphire! Yes, George? Oh, hello, honey. Hello, George. I got news for you. Yes? Mama gonna move? No, we are. We are? What do you mean, we are? Didn't she buy the business? Yes, she did, George. And that's the reason there won't be room here for all of us. <laughs> She's in the rare chinchilla. <laughs> 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 